the Yellowstone supervolcano, a caldera volcano, is the caldera of a volcano like this Yellowstone thing, supervolcano that is a continent killer and it blows every six to eight hundred thousand years, and everyone dies. We're about to venture into the heart of Yellowstone where nature's fury simmers beneath the surface. Recent ominous signs have left scientists on edge, a massive dome-shaped uplift growing day by day, unsettling shifts in Yellowstone Lake's water levels, and a mysterious 100-foot-long crack splitting the earth open. As we explore Joe Rogan's stark warnings about the dangers of Yellowstone, a chilling question arises, is the sleeping giant awakening, and could we be on the brink of a catastrophic geological upheaval of unimaginable proportions? Join us nestled in the rugged wilderness of the American West, Yellowstone National Park is a marvel of nature's beauty and a geological enigma spanning over 2.2 million acres atop one of the world's most fascinating volcanic systems. For millions of years, immense geological forces have shaped this iconic park, often hidden beneath the surface yet occasionally revealing themselves in spectacular ways. This supervolcano, monitored by the United States Geological Survey and harboring the capacity for global devastation, has not experienced a super-eruption in over 64,000 years, leaving a legacy of immense calderas and resurgent domes formed from cataclysmic events. But what does Joe Rogan's unfiltered perspective reveal about these seismic shifts, and how do his insights into a potential Yellowstone eruption intertwine with these recent shocking geological changes? To understand that, we need to dive into the heart of this story, the Yellowstone Caldera, a colossal depression formed during the last of three super-eruptions over the past 2.1 million years. These events have not just shaped the park, but the entire region, leaving a legacy that geologists and scientists are still unraveling today. The most recent eruption approximately 631,000 years ago ejected an estimated 1,000 cubic kilometer of material covering much of North America in ash and altering global climate patterns. But what happens after such a colossal eruption? Does the Earth simply close the chapter on such a dramatic event? Not quite. In Yellowstone's case, the story continued with the formation of resurgent domes, a phenomenon as intriguing as it is significant. After the last super-eruption, the emptied magma chamber beneath the caldera began to refill, leading to a surprising geological phenomenon, the formation of resurgent domes. This process caused the caldera floor to swell upwards, creating two expansive dome-shaped uplifts, the Sour Creek Dome and the Mallard Lake Dome. Now, let's break down what resurgent domes really are. To make it easier to understand, imagine a giant underground balloon filling up with magma or molten rock. As this balloon fills and expands, it pushes up the ground above it. This is similar to how a bubble forms in dough as it bakes, the ground swells and forms a dome shape, hence the term resurgent dome. These domes are not just small bumps in the landscape, they're massive, each stretching over 10 kilometers in width and rising hundreds of meters above the caldera floor. Though siblings in their formation, the Sour Creek and Mallard Lake domes aren't identical twins in their history or structure. The Sour Creek Dome, for instance, rose above the adjacent caldera rim before its uplift ceased. It's like a giant mound that kept growing until it couldn't anymore. Its surface is crisscrossed by numerous faults, these are like cracks that form when the dome pushes up against the surrounding rock. These faults are a direct response to the intense upwarping forces. On the other hand, the Mallard Lake Dome not only underwent an early uplift but also experienced a significant resurgence about 170,000 years ago. This later episode was marked by the eruption of the Mallard Lake rhyolite flow, which added a new layer of rock to most of the dome's surface, increasing its volume. This shows us that these domes are more than just simple hills, they're complex geological features with a dynamic history. The significance of these resurgent domes extends beyond their physical presence, they are crucial to understanding the park's current geothermal activity and potential future volcanic events. The uplift and deformation of the caldera floor, as evidenced by these domes, suggest that the Yellowstone volcanic system is far from dormant. Beneath its serene facade lies a restless giant, awakening and reshaping the very ground we stand on. Yet this initial revelation was just the prelude for a seismic shock wave of discovery. Joe Rogan, the famed commentator and podcaster, has echoed the alarming sentiment surrounding Yellowstone supervolcano in various discussions. He shed light on the hidden threats and potential catastrophic impact of this slumbering giant. 
Rogan's discussions are not just conversations, they're vivid, stark warnings of the raw, untamed power lurking beneath one of America's most iconic landscapes. In one of his episodes, Rogan reveals the unsettling reality of the Yellowstone supervolcano, suggesting that the eruption has already begun. The idea that such a colossal force of nature might already be in motion is nothing short of terrifying. Rogan has also taken the time to explain the real threat of supervolcanoes, including Yellowstone. His approach is straightforward yet profound, unraveling the complex geological phenomena into insights that resonate with urgency and concern. It's a stark reminder of the immense power beneath our feet and the potential for a scenario that could reshape not just the regional landscape but have global implications. Moreover, Rogan doesn't shy away from expressing his concerns explicitly, warning about the eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano. His words are a call to understand and respect the forces of nature that, while often silent, have the potential to unleash devastation of an almost unimaginable scale. It's a perspective that brings the conversation about Yellowstone and its hidden dangers to the forefront, highlighting the need for awareness and preparedness in the face of such a colossal natural threat. Rogan's dire warning about the supervolcano's eruption resonates strongly with recent scientific discoveries, which have further unraveled the mysteries of the Yellowstone caldera and reinforced the urgency of his concerns. Researchers have now unearthed a dome-shaped uplift within the Yellowstone volcano system, a terrifying revelation that not only upends our understanding of dormant volcanoes but also unleashes a flurry of questions about what lies beneath. This discovery, illuminated by the keen observations of Dr. Robert Christensen and University of Utah's Robert Smith, emerged from an intriguing change in water levels at Yellowstone Lake, as showcased in the Inside USGS documentary. Bob Smith, deeply fascinated by the subtle yet significant transformations occurring in the Yellowstone caldera, observed that the water levels in different parts of Yellowstone Lake weren't consistent. Instead, they varied, suggesting that the entire lake basin was tilting like a seesaw. This isn't something you'd notice while casually strolling by the lake, but to a geologist, it's a glaring signal that the ground beneath isn't as stable as it appears. This tilting was no minor occurrence, it was an indicator of a significant geological shift beneath the tranquil waters. Imagine holding a shallow pan filled with water. If you tilt the pan slightly, the water level changes, higher on one side and lower on the other. That's precisely what was happening in Yellowstone Lake, and it suggested that something profound and forceful was pushing up from below, disturbing the ground and, consequently, the water above. This disturbance revealed itself as a dome-shaped uplift, a dramatic rise of the ground that Dr. Christensen described as spectacular. The uplift could have been caused by magma, the molten rock beneath the Earth's surface, pushing its way up into the crust. Alternatively, it might have been the result of the park's hydrothermal system, a network of hot water and steam expanding and pushing the ground upward. Both scenarios point to an active and changing magmatic system below Yellowstone, a system that's not sleeping but rather stirring, reshaping the landscape in ways that can suddenly become visible. The task of monitoring such ground deformation at Yellowstone has evolved significantly over the years, now incorporating modern techniques and advanced technology. Today, scientists use tools like GPS and NSAR to detect even the slightest movements. These methods are a leap from the past techniques and involve using signals from satellites orbiting the Earth to meticulously track how the ground shifts, swells, or sinks. In earlier times, Geodesy, the branch of Earth science dedicated to understanding Earth's shape and its variations, was the primary tool for studying deformation. Geodesists employed a meticulous technique known as leveling to measure vertical deformation, capturing both the rise and fall of the ground. This process involved using a surveying instrument known as a level and a pair of graduated staffs, carefully measuring elevation differences from one benchmark to the next. By carefully repeating these measurements over a network of points across the park, scientists could build a detailed map of how the ground has moved over time. Then, a subsequent survey would detect any changes in these elevations over time. The inaugural leveling survey in Yellowstone, conducted back in 1923, left a legacy, with some original benchmarks still standing today. Over 500 benchmarks. Yellowstone National Park a subsequent survey prompted by the 1975 magnitude 6.1 Yellowstone Park earthquake unveiled an astonishing pattern, 
the heart of the caldera had surged upwards by more than 28 inches since 1923, surging at an average rate of 1.4 centimeters per year. This staggering uplift was far beyond the effects of the earthquake alone, signaling that the ground was swelling, rising up at an average rate faster than most plants grow. When scientists mapped the changes in the ground level at Yellowstone between 1923 and 1975-77, they made a striking discovery, the ground had risen most dramatically between two key areas known as the Mallard Lake and Sour Creek Resurgent Domes. Near iconic landmarks like Old Faithful and Lard's Rapids, to understand this, imagine the surface of a trampoline sagging underweight. Now, picture this trampoline gradually returning to its original shape as the weight is lifted. This is similar to how the ground at Yellowstone was rising. From 1983 onwards, scientists kept a close eye on these changes every year, noticing that this rising of the ground, known as uplift, continued until 1985. But in 1985, something shifted, an earthquake swarm occurred near the northwest edge of the caldera, and as a result, the gradually rising ground started to sink back down, a process known as subsidence. Scientists eventually found a likely explanation, it was possible that fluids like magma or hot water and steam that had been building up pressure under the surface started to leak out of the caldera, and this release of fluids eased the pressure that had been causing the ground to rise. However, starting in 1995, the behavior of the caldera floor became even more complex, parts of the floor began to rise anew, while others continued to descend. A fresh zone of uplift emerged, experiencing rates of rise unprecedented in the region's recorded history. Amidst this geological turmoil, scientists observed a troubling connection between these erratic movements of the earth and the swarms of earthquakes that trembled through the area. It became clear that these tremors and shifts were not isolated events but interconnected pieces of a larger, more menacing pattern. The caldera's fluctuating surface mirrored the deep, unseen forces at work beneath, including the relentless migration of magma and the shifting of tectonic plates, hinting at the immense power lurking within the heart of Yellowstone. Recently, another chilling revelation came to light in the vast wilderness of Yellowstone Park, Guides on a seemingly ordinary day near the hidden falls in Grand Teton National Park noticed something out of the ordinary. A gigantic crack, about 100 feet high and over 300 feet long, seemed to have appeared overnight, making its way through a rock wall in the Teton area. But what caused this sudden and dramatic fissure to form in such a well-traveled and monitored area, and what does its appearance mean in a place sitting next to a sleeping giant, the Yellowstone supervolcano, now known as the Hidden Falls Fissure? Its discovery sent a shiver of apprehension through the scientific community and the public alike, serving as a shocking reminder of the unpredictability of nature. The Teton area, while not directly on top of Yellowstone's magma chambers, is closely connected to the larger Yellowstone system, an area no stranger to the Earth's restless movements. While finding fissures like this can be alarming, it's not entirely unexpected in such a volatile landscape. However, its proximity to the massive Yellowstone volcano has raised concerns to a new level. The implications of the Hidden Falls fissure extend beyond its sudden appearance. This fissure serves as a sinister reminder of the deep geological processes continuously at work beneath our feet. It is a product of the ongoing tectonic activity in the region, where the Earth's crustal movement exerts immense stress on the rock, leading to fractures and ominous cracks. This event highlights the dynamic nature of the Earth's crust, especially in a region as geologically active as Yellowstone, and the sheer unpredictability of nature. The potential eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano is a significant and terrifying concern given this geological activity. While the supervolcano last erupted approximately 630,000 years ago, the question remains not if but when it might erupt again. The gigantic magma chamber beneath Yellowstone, made up of rhyolite and stretching significant depths beneath the surface, just stands as proof of the power and scale of the volcanic forces at play. The potential consequences of a Yellowstone volcanic eruption are nothing short of catastrophic. While there's no need to incite panic, understanding the gravity of such an event is essential, as it would have far-reaching impacts, not just in the immediate vicinity but potentially on a global scale. Yellowstone National Park sits atop a massive supervolcano, one of the largest and most dangerous in the world. Scientists estimate that when this volcano erupts again, it will unleash a devastating force unlike anything we've witnessed in modern times. 
the eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano would result in the ejection of enormous volumes of ash into the atmosphere. This volcanic ash is not the soft, fluffy material you might associate with fireplace ashes, it's more like fine, abrasive sand. As it falls from the sky, it would blanket the landscape, covering everything in its path with a thick layer. The immediate impact of ash fall would be a logistical nightmare, roads, railways, and airports would be shut down, making transportation nearly impossible. People in the affected areas would need to shelter indoors to avoid inhaling the abrasive ash, which can cause respiratory problems and damage machinery. But the consequences of ash fall go beyond inconvenience, it can lead to the collapse of roofs under the weight of the accumulated ash, disrupting power supplies and causing structural damage to buildings. Additionally, it can contaminate water sources, making them unsafe to drink and causing further hardships for affected communities. While the ash clouds may be the most visible aspect of a Yellowstone eruption, the gases released during such an event could be equally, if not more, dangerous. One of the primary gases released is sulfur dioxide. When SO2 reacts with water vapor in the atmosphere, it forms sulfuric acid aerosols, which can fall to the earth as acid rain. This acid rain can have devastating effects on the environment, it can acidify water bodies, damaging aquatic ecosystems and affecting drinking water quality. It can also harm vegetation, corrode buildings and infrastructure and pose serious health risks to humans and wildlife alike. But one of the most immediate and alarming consequences of a Yellowstone eruption would be the onset of a volcanic winter. With massive amounts of ash and gases ejected into the atmosphere, the eruption would lead to the formation of a dense cloud that could block sunlight for months or even years. This sudden and prolonged reduction in sunlight would lead to a drastic drop in temperatures worldwide. The consequences of a volcanic winter are nothing short of apocalyptic, global temperatures would plummet, leading to crop failures, food shortages, and famine. The very fabric of our modern society, which relies heavily on agriculture and global food supply chains, would be stretched to its limits. Human populations would face challenges not only in securing food but also in staying warm and maintaining basic living conditions. One of the most mysterious aspects of a Yellowstone eruption is its unpredictability. Yellowstone stands as one of the best monitored volcanoes in the world, and the United States Geological Survey keeps a vigilant watch on any unusual activity, including tremors and ground movements, which they refer to as just Yellowstone being Yellowstone. But the geological forces at play are complex, and the signs of an impending eruption can be subtle and elusive. What's concerning is that recent research has suggested that the lead-up to a Yellowstone eruption might be shorter than previously thought. This raises questions about our ability to respond effectively in the event of an impending catastrophe. The time frame for evacuations, resource allocation, and disaster preparedness would be compressed, adding an extra layer of intrigue and urgency to the situation. Could it be that we won't know the volcano is ready to erupt until it's too late? To understand the possibility and potential consequences of a supervolcanic eruption, let's take a deep dive through history. Previous eruptions and lava flows that have sculpted this landscape over millennia provide key insights into the forces at play in Yellowstone. The period between 170,000 and 70,000 years ago was marked by intense volcanic activity in the Yellowstone region. This series of eruptions was not a single continuous event, but rather a sequence of powerful and explosive volcanic activities that spewed immense volumes of rhyolite lava across the landscape. But what drove these eruptions? Beneath Yellowstone lies a vast magma chamber filled with molten rock, gases, and minerals. As pressure in this chamber increased, it eventually found weak points in the Earth's crust to escape, leading to the eruptions that we study today. These historical eruptions were significant not only in their scale but also in the variety of volcanic phenomena they produced. The expelled rhyolite lava flowed across the caldera, filling it with layer upon layer of molten rock that slowly cooled and solidified. These flows were often accompanied by massive ash clouds and pyroclastic materials, which settled over a wide area and significantly altered the topography of the region. The impact of these eruptions on the landscape was profound, the once rugged terrain was smoothed over by the thick, viscous rhyolite lava, creating a more uniform and expansive surface. Over time, erosion and other natural processes sculpted this new terrain, 
leading to the formation of valleys, canyons, and other geological features that we see in Yellowstone today. The heat from the cooling lava also contributed to the park's extensive hydrothermal system, fueling the geysers, hot springs, and fumaroles that make Yellowstone a geothermal wonderland. The journey of magma, or the molten rock beneath the Earth's crust, also plays a crucial role in the relationship between volcanic activity and dome uplift. After the massive eruption that formed the Yellowstone caldera, the vast chamber that had been emptied of its magma began a slow and relentless process of refilling. But where does this magma come from, and how does it lead to the formation of resurgent domes like the one that was recently discovered? Magma originates in the mantle, the layer of the earth beneath the crust, where temperatures and pressures are high enough to melt rock. In areas like Yellowstone, heat from the Earth's core, along with other geological processes, creates pockets of this molten rock. Over time, this magma rises through the crust, seeking pathways through fractures and zones of weakness, driven by buoyancy and the immense pressures from deep within the Earth. As this magma accumulates beneath the caldera, it exerts an upward force on the overlying rock, imagine the ground above as the lid on a pot of boiling water. Just as the steam pushes up against the lid, the magma pushes against the Earth's surface. In the case of Yellowstone, this pressure doesn't result in an explosive release, but rather a gradual uplift, the ground swelling as if taking a deep breath. This is where the Sour Creek and Mallard Lake domes come into play. These areas, likely zones of weakness from previous volcanic activity, become the focal points for this upward pressure. The magma's intrusion causes the ground above to bulge upwards, forming the domes. But why does the magma not always lead to an eruption? The answer lies in the nature of the magma and the surrounding rock. Not all magma is the same, its composition can greatly affect its behavior. In Yellowstone, the magma is often rhyolite, a type of magma that is very viscous, meaning it flows slowly and can trap gases. This can lead to explosive eruptions when the pressure becomes too great. However, if the magma can find a way to release this pressure gradually, such as by lifting the ground above it, it may not erupt. The rock above the magma chamber also plays a role, if it is strong and flexible enough to bend without breaking, it can form a dome rather than fracturing and allowing an eruption. The relationship between volcanic activity and dome uplift is intricate and multifaceted. On the one hand, the uplift of the domes is a clear indicator of magmatic activity beneath the surface, it signals that magma is accumulating and that the volcanic system is active. 